Painting a cute watercolor owl in Procreate is easier than you think and I'm going to show you exactly how you can do it, no matter your skill level. Hello wonderful people, it's Genevieve and my goal here on this channel is to teach you all about illustration and design. So if you're new, make sure to subscribe so you don't miss any of the weekly videos and so that you can join our wonderful creative community. And with that said, grab your drawing tools and let's get started. So as usual, we are going to create a new canvas so we have somewhere to draw. For reference, these are the dimensions I will be using. It is just because that's the dimensions of the pre-textured file, which I will show you in a second. But make sure you find dimensions that work for your own project requirements. Now, if you're not exactly sure how to pick a canvas size, I have a video in which I teach you everything you need to know in order to make your decision, so I'll link that below. Now, as you can see, this is the pre-textured file I was telling you about. There's a slight paper texture to it. Now, if you don't have that file, it is part of the Big Brush Bundle. You can check it out in this link in the description below. But if you don't have it and you don't want to get it, that's totally fine as well. I'm going to give you tips to recreate some sort of a texture without the bundle. Now, one question I often get just before we start is how to get the little reference image on the top left. So you're just going to go in the wrench icon menu, select the canvas sub menu, I guess, and then you're going to be able to activate the little reference um, toggle, I guess. And from there, it's going to give you the option to import an image. So you can import the image. If you want to use my owl as your reference, it is linked in the description below along with the color palette and they're both totally free. That being said, we're going to start with just a super rough sketch that we're not going to see in the final result anyway, so you can use really any color at this stage. I'm going to go with a neutral gray. And one more little detail in this video, I'm always going to be suggesting two different brushes. One is going to be a free brush that comes with Procreate and it's going to allow you to follow along just fine. But the other brushes are going to be brushes from the big brush bundle, especially the watercolor set. And those brushes, they're not essential. That's very important. You can follow along without them. But if you do have them, they're going to help you save some time and just get more professional results overall just they have some randomness in the color and in the texture so that's super helpful you don't have to kind of do the texture manually it just is within the brushes so in terms of free brushes at this stage you could pick in the sketching panel so a brush that comes with procreate the hp pencil that would work really well or honestly any brush you're comfortable with is great at this point or if you have the watercolor brushes you could use the same brush as i will be using so the coloring pencil and here you're going to make sure that you have a new layer and rename this layer to sketch just so we know what we're working with. And at this stage we're just roughly sketching so it doesn't need to look good, we just want to work out the basic proportions. So we're going to start with a nice kind of oval or circle for the body and then a slightly smaller, maybe even flatter oval for the head. Now here you get to decide the proportions, that's up to you, you can play with them and have something different than me. And then also don't forget to map out the branch, so nothing precise here either. So once you have your basic shapes and proportions, you can go back in and start, I guess, kind of cleaning them up or just going back to refine the shapes and adding the details. So for that, I personally like to refine the shape of the head and making the connection of the head to the body a bit more straight Then adding the wings, so just kind of teardrop shapes, one being very visible and the other one being a bit more hidden. You might also want to mark the line between the head and the body because on owls that line tend to be very visible. And just to help us visualize the symmetry within the owl, go ahead and draw a slightly curved vertical line both in the head and the body. So this is going to be essentially the middle line of the head and the middle line of the body. Don't forget to draw the feathers on top of the head. I don't know what they're called in English. In French it's aigrette. So if you know in English, let me know in the comments, I'm curious. Um, but yeah, just these very basic, almost triangular shapes. And then you can use the vertical symmetry guide to help you draw, uh, how do you describe that? I guess the shape around the eyes. <laughs> so it's this really curvy M. And you can make that one pop, pop out, I guess, or poke out of the, um, the head shape itself. You can also really quickly map out where the eyes are going to be, but once more, don't agonize over the placement here. It really doesn't matter that much. And for the beak, you can draw a very simple teardrop shape with a slightly curved line underneath, something like that. And the feet are also going to be very simple. I like to just draw three ovals per feet on top of the branch, nothing more complicated than that. 
And at this stage, if you notice that you don't have room for the tail like I do, don't hesitate to use the arrow tool to change the position of your owl. You can set it to uniform if you want to resize your owl, and you can set it to distort if you want to kind of squish your owl in one direction or the other to change the proportions. So play with that, reposition your owl as needed, and then draw the tail. So just three kind of rounded rectangles for the tail, the two on the sides being a bit shorter than the one in the middle. Awesome, and that's really all we need for the sketch. So if you have something that looks as crazy as I do right now, that's totally okay. We are going to change the blending mode of the sketch layer though to multiply so that we can see it really well on dark colors. But we're also going to lower the opacity so we can just barely see the sketch. I know that might seem a bit contradictory, but basically we don't have, we don't want to have the sketch, you know, overwhelming everything we're going to do, but we want to still see it on dark colors. So that's why we use multiply and lower opacity. So once you've done that, go ahead and create a new layer under the sketch layer and rename this one to whatever color you're going to use for the main part of the body of the owl. Um, in my case, I'm going to use purple, but you could use really any color of your choice here. And I'm going to show you ways to change it later anyway, so don't, don't agonize over it. I'm just going to rename mine to color for now. So I'm going to go with purple, but again, you can use any color of your choice. You could go with brown if you want. I thought that was a bit boring because the branch is brown, so anyway. <laughs> In terms of brushes here, you can go in the brushing panel, picking the hard brush, so that would be the free brush option, and then lowering the opacity here on the slider to around 40%. Now here, you're going to be able, by doing that, to get this overlapping effect, which is really important um, for, for, for the tutorial, so that's really the main key thing. You're not going to get the texture, but again, I'm going to give you tips on still getting some sort of texture later. And if you have the watercolor brushes though, go ahead and pick the dark edges watercolor. Now at this stage, the goal is to draw or color in, I should say, the individual parts of the owl that are going to be colored in one stroke. So what I mean by that is, for example, you can see here the left wing, I hit it without lifting the pencil, and I'm going to do the same thing for the right wing. So every section, you try to not lift the pencil. If you do lift the pencil, you're going to see, you're going to get some overlays. Now those overlays, we want to have them, but we want them to be purposeful. So we're going to later use that to add shadows and color variation. But for now, we want to try and have a shape that is solid. If you can't though, if it's too tricky, for example, the head, that's kind of a weird shape. So it's quite hard to not lift the pencil. If you do get overlays, that's totally okay. We're going to blend them in later. So don't, you know, don't worry too much about it. Don't spend three billion hours trying to draw the different shapes without lifting the pencil. But if you can, that's better. <laughs> so essentially here you're going to color in the two wings, the top of the head, kind of this helmet shape, the feathers on top of the head, which I still don't know the name, the aigrette. Let's learn French today. <laughs> the aigrette. And then the tail. There you go. Awesome. So once you have your basic shapes, we're going to go ahead and start layering the colors. So that's the beauty of watercolor brushes or brushes with a transparency. You can add shadow and color variation without changing the color of your brush. And that's going to help us later get the watercolor effect. So you're going to decide which side of your owl is going to be in the shadow. In my case, I'm pretending that the light source is on the top left. So the shadows would be mostly on the right side of the owl. And then you're just going to exactly with the same brush, exactly with the same color, layer your strokes, which is going to create darker colors. So you can layer your strokes two, three, four, five times as much as you want until you get enough contrast in your piece. I'm layering mine in some sections just two times, in some of those sections three times, mostly on the very edge of the right part of my all is going to be where I layer three times. And don't forget here as well on the tail to add a shadow. I'm going with these triangular shape as you can see. And you don't have to necessarily draw the shadow behind the branch because, you know, the branch is going to be on top anyway. But it is important to remember that the branch is going to be there and it's going to be casting a shadow on the tail. So although it's not painted yet, just don't forget that there's going to be a branch there. Okay, so we're going to blend everything later. For now, we're just placing the colors. Don't worry, it's going to look crazy, that's fine. 
So we're going to create a new layer now for the eyes. And I like to separate all the different colors on separate layers so you can easily change them later as needed. So just a new layer above the color, renaming this one to eyes. And with the body color still activated, you're going to pick the harmony option here at the bottom of the color menu. Now at the top now, you're going to get a few options, complementary, split complementary, analogous, triadic, tetradic, all of those are going to be suggestions basically made by Procreate of colors that based on the color wheel are going to work well with your body color. So just go through those until you find a color that you like. You can then select it. So just clicking on the little circle and going back to the classic option, you can then change the saturation and brightness of the color. So you don't want to change the hue itself, but you can change the saturation and brightness and it's still going to work really well with your body color. So once you've picked the color, you can simply, no surprise here, draw the eyes. So once more, trying to draw them without lifting the pencil. And once you have the basic shapes, you can overlap your color maybe two or three times on the top half of the eyes. Something a little bit like this. Awesome! So once you have the eyes, we are going to draw the rest of the body, so the belly and the front of the face. So for that, you can go ahead and create a new layer above the color but below the eyes and rename this one to belly or face or I'm renaming mine to cream because that's what the color is going to be but you get the point you just want to make sure that you remember which layer it is and then you're going to use the same color you used for the eyes but you're going to make it super super light so not white because obviously otherwise we won't see it but something fairly light and you can test it before you know painting the entire piece but you want to make sure that you can really see it and then same thing as before, you're just going to color in the face with one stroke if possible, if not, don't worry about it. And then the belly with one stroke, again, if not possible, don't worry about it. And while you're working on that, I'm going to tell you a little bit more about the giveaway. So the prize for this video is going to be a big brush bundle. So I'm going to pick one winner and I'm going to announce it on my Instagram story on the date that I'm going to write on the screen right here. And the way to enter is really easy. If you've watched my videos before, you know that at one point in the video, there's going to be a secret password. If you're new on the channel, don't worry, it's just later at one point in the video, I'm going to write a secret word on the screen or a secret prompt. And all you have to do is write this word or this prompt both on YouTube in the comments for this video, as well as on Instagram. So I will link everything you need to know in the description of this video below. And it's going to be a random draw. I'm just going to pick a name randomly and then announce the winner on my story. And the rules are all in the video description below if you want to check them out. They're not more complicated than what I said. It's mostly just legal stuff because I don't want to get sued. That's not fun. I just want to give you brushes. That's it. <laughs> This is kind of a tutorial where you really have to trust the process because it doesn't look good right now, but that's totally okay. When we start blending everything, it's going to look much better. But before we can do that, we still have a few things to map out. So we're going to create a new layer above the eye layer, rename this one to pupil, and we're going to pick a super dark color. Now in general, I like to avoid using pure blacks in my illustrations. I just think it makes the illustration a bit more lively if you're using colors that are not like neutral grays or pure white or stuff like that. So I'm gonna go instead with a very, very, very dark brown. I know it probably doesn't seem like there's much of a difference, but you know, I am just telling you. <laughs> and then you can go ahead and draw very, very, very big pupils. So we're drawing an owl here. We want their eyes to be very intense, but don't really worry too much about the placement of the pupil just yet, because that's the beauty of drawing on separate layers. We're going to move them later for now, just roughly place them. And that's more than good enough. We're also going to use the exact same color for the beak and the feet. So go ahead and create a new layer. We name it to beak <laughs> and same thing as before, you're just going to draw, well, color in the beak. And here you might want to draw the top part of the beak without lifting the pencil, then drawing the bottom part of the beak without lifting the pencil, and maybe overlapping the bottom part of the beak twice so it's darker than the top. We're also going to use the exact same color for the feet, but since the feet are going to be above the branch, that's really important, they're on a separate layer. So just create a new layer above everything, rename it to feet, and just go ahead and color in the little beans. Now here, you might want to draw them individually or not, that's really up to you. Uh, and by individually, I mean the little toes individually, or honestly, it, it really doesn't matter that much for the feet. So just, just draw the feet real quick and that's gonna be perfectly fine, I'm sure. 
And the last little thing we have to map out before we make this look good is the branch. So just go ahead and create a new layer above the beak but below the feet and rename this one to branch. Now you can draw any color branch of your choice. I'm gonna go with just brown because why not? So kind of a nice chocolatey brown. And here you're going to make sure your brush is not too big, not too small, kind of medium, and the exact size is going to depend on the size of your canvas. But basically what you want is to be able to draw maybe three, four or five strokes that are following the direction of the branch and layer them. So that way you create this kind of bark effect. Right now it looks bad, but again, when we blend everything, it's going to look good, trust me. You can also add some little secondary branches poking out of your main branch. Nothing too intense here, maybe just one, two, or three small little ones. Okay, well congratulations, that was the hardest part of the video. Now we just need to bring it all together and make it look good. So the first thing we're going to do is organize our layers a little bit. So you can go ahead and select the color, cream, eye, pupil, and beak layers. So just swiping them towards the right with one finger and then grouping them. So that way we have everything that is owl related in one group. We can rename that group to owl, by the way, except for the feet because the feet need to be above the branch. Once you have that, we are going to create a new layer below the branch layer, but above the owl group. And this new layer, you don't need to rename it because it's not that important. And for that, you're going to use pure white. And we are all going to use, no matter if you're using free brushes or the, the brushes from the watercolor set, the hard brush, but with the opacity back to 100%. And all you're going to do here is paint with white below the branch. Because the branch is transparent, we could see the tail. So we want to make sure that there is something between the branch and the tail. So that's the exact same technique you would use if you wanted to have your character on a colored background. You would just draw with white below all the layers that have your character colors. So once you have your branch and your white below the branch layer, you can group those two layers in one group, rename that group to branch so everything is clean and organized. And then just do the same thing for the feet. So a new layer below the feet and just paint with white below the feet so that they don't show the branch that is below them. And there's really no need to be super precise here. Really, you just want to quickly paint. It's okay if it goes a little bit out or if it's not perfectly following the lines. And just like for the branch, you're also going to group the feet in this white below the feet layer to create one nice, neat feet group. Now at this stage, you might want to go ahead and hide the sketch layer just so you can see what you're working with a little bit better. And you can zoom in on the face and resize or reposition the pupils as needed. So just going back in the owl group, selecting the pupil layer. And with the selection tool, which is this squiggly S here at the top, you can just go ahead and select one pupil. So just setting your selection tool to freehand might make it easier. And with the arrow tool, either set to distort if you want to change the proportions or uniform if you want to keep the proportions, you can resize and reposition the pupils as needed. So that's really handy. We love digital art for that. We can just reposition and resize stuff as we need as we go through the process. And at this stage, we're ready to start blending all the weird overlaps that we've created. So they're really important, but they look super weird. So finally, we can make them look good. And we're going to start with the color layer. Now you have a few options here. You could use the smudge tool, so the little finger icon at the top, and setting your brush to the hair brushing, maybe the medium brush or soft brush. That's really, you know, going to create super soft gradient and blending. You could also experiment with all the brushes, honestly, from the painting panel as your smudge tool. Usually I use the stucco brush because I like the texture of it, but it's a bit intense for watercolor. Uh, you might want to use maybe the spectra. I don't know, honestly, you could really experiment here and try a bunch of different options. And if you find the one that you like, by the way, feel free to leave it in comment. That's always, you know, really great. So you can experiment either again with the soft brush or the medium brush in your brushing panel, or maybe something from the painting panel. If you do have the watercolor brushes though, go ahead and set your paint brush, so not the smudge tool, the paintbrush to the water blender at the very bottom. So this is kind of like a smudge tool but that has a lot more randomness to it so that's going to help you create a more realistic watercolor vibe. And here it's really a simple step. All you have to do is go over the kind of strange digital overlaps and blend them. And you can see I'm going in with a super weird kind of random motion because basically here we do want to have a little bit of variety. So we don't want to create a perfectly smooth gradient. We want it to look like it's the different pigments of the watercolor blending in with the water, which is not, you know, perfectly smooth when you paint with real watercolor. 
So just go over all the weird digital looking overlaps until they look the way you want them to be. But making sure that you keep the edges of the color uh, sharp and, and clean. So you don't want to blend, for example, the side of the face or the side of the wing. You want to make sure that the shapes themselves remain really nice and sharp. And with that, it is time for the secret password. So if you've watched this final video, please go ahead and leave me a comment with the color you use for the main part of your owl. So in my case, it would be purple. If you use purple, just say purple as well. And if you're new on the channel, you might be like, what's what's the secret password? What is that all about? Well, it does a few things, especially when there's a giveaway, it allows you to enter the giveaway. But even without that, it gives me a lot of insight into how to edit and pace my videos better, which helps me to create better tutorials for you guys. So it's already a win-win, but it's also really cool to see who's part of the community here on the channel, because you know, you guys know me, you see my face in the intro, you hear my voice throughout the entire video, but I don't have any idea who you guys are unless you leave a comment whatever the comment is then i get to see sometimes your face sometimes your name and it's just super fun so just leave a comment with the color you used for your owl and if you want to enter the giveaway don't forget to leave it on instagram as well so once that is done we're going to keep going we're going to still just blend everything so going this time on the cream or the lighter color for the rest of the owl and just doing the same thing blending in anything that should not be there now here I'm going to stop talking to let you focus on your blending. So we're going to go through all the layers that require blending. So the body, like the belly, the face part, as well as the eyes if you need to, maybe the beak if you need to, and definitely the branch. Though so I'm going to give you a few tips for the branch, so we're going to meet up there. Once you're done blending everything that needed blending on your owl, you're going to go ahead and select the branch layer, so not the white, obviously the brown part. And this time, instead of going in with a random motion, you're going to use the same brush or the same smudge tool, but this time following the direction of your strokes. So you can still blend, but still keep some of that bark direction texture effect. So nothing more complicated, but just make sure to keep the direction of the branch and the strokes going, even with the blending tool. Now at this stage, everything looks a little bit flat, so feel free to use the eraser set to whatever brush, it really doesn't matter, to add some lights back to maybe the branch, maybe the owl, really anywhere you want to add some light, you could do that. So just using the eraser and then going back with either the smudge tool or your water blender to blend those lights in. So nothing fancy here, but make sure you don't overdo it. I'm obviously just going to keep it on the branch. I don't want to touch the owl. I think it's fine like that. Great, so at this stage, we have pretty much everything mapped out, but it looks kind of bland. So we're going to go ahead and add the details to really bring this piece together. For the details, you're going to go back in your owl group and create a new layer above everything, rename this layer to details. And here you could for now just leave the opacity at 100%, but later we might go back and tweak it as needed. And you're going to pick honestly any color of your choice. I'm going to go back with the color I used for the main part of the body, but you could go with black if you wanted to. It would just look a bit less watercolory if that was the case. So just go with the color of the body. Honestly, I think that's the best bet. In terms of brushes here, you're going to go in the sketching panel and pick the 6B pencil. That would be the option for the free brush. If you have the watercolor brushes though, you're going to go back to the coloring pencil. So the same brush you use for the sketch. And here, there's really no right or wrong way to do this. You could go ahead and add the details wherever you feel like your shapes need to be a bit more defined or wherever you would want to darken the shape a little bit. So I'm going to keep my video in the background, speed it up a little bit though, but you can use it as a reference if you want, or you can just go ahead and do your own thing. That's totally fine. I'm going to stop talking what's more to let you focus. And we're going to meet in the next step. We're going to add details in the eyes and other pieces of the owl. And for the belly head part, you might want to go ahead and draw the, the delimitation line just to make sure it's very clean and crisp. But if you use the same color you use to paint the belly, it might be a little bit too pale. So you might want to just test it out, make it a bit darker as needed, and then just draw your line below the head. 
Now you're gonna notice here I'm not doing the eyes just yet because we're going to do the outlines of the eyes I guess on a separate layer so we can then move them around really easily. So once you have essentially the body details, you can go back to the opacity and change it as needed. I like to lower mine just a little bit so that they blend in better with the lower color and don't look quite as digital, but honestly that's a question of personal preference as usual. And then you can go ahead and create a new layer above the pupil layer so that we can draw the outlines of the eyes. So that's going to make a big, big, big difference. Believe me, your owl is suddenly going to look nice. So just a new layer, like I was saying, rename this one to eyes, details, or something like that. And with the same color you use for the pupil, so a very, very dark brown, you're going to go ahead and draw the outline of the eyes. So there's really nothing complicated here. Just a tip though, I like to leave the outline kind of open on the inner corner of the eyes. I just think, I like it. <laughs> so you can do that if you want, or you can fully close the outlines if you feel like it. Okay, and the next step is probably the most fun of the entire video. It's super easy, but it's adding the highlights in the eyes. So still on the eye details layer, because you know, it's still eye details. You could draw it on the pupil if you wanted to, but just, just stick to the eyes details. You're going to pick pure white, which is very rare we do that, but yeah, pure white. And you are going to draw little ovals or little circles in the eyes to make them come to life. You can see it's just such a simple little details, but it makes such a big difference. Since the arrows are very big, kind of globulous eyes, you can also draw a smaller circle on the opposite side of the pupil and maybe even slightly outline one edge of the eye. And so that way you're going to make sure your eyes one look really alive and your owl by now should look very very cute. And with your white still selected, you might want to go back on the general details layer to add some highlights on the beak as well. So we're almost done, but the last few steps are really going to make the biggest difference, so make sure you watch until the end. And the next thing we're going to do is simply grouping the eyes layers all together and then rename this group to eyes. So that way we can move everything that is eye related very, very easily, but we still have the layers separated if we need to, for example, move just a pupil or just a highlight or something like that. And you can also use the selection tool and the arrow tool on the entire group. So for example here, if I wanted to move or resize the left eye, I could select the left eye and then with the arrow tool, I don't know, distort it a little bit. So that's really neat. You can use these tools on individual layers, like I was saying, if you want to just move the pupil or on the entire group, if you wanted to move the eye itself. Next, we're going to add some color variation in the owl to make it more interesting. And that's super important if you're using the free brushes, this is how you're going to add a little bit more texture. So to do that, we're going to go back on the color layer of the owl. And with the selection tool still set to freehand with the color fill option deactivated, you're going to make a rough selection of the bottom part of the owl. And then you're going to feather the selection. The exact number is going to depend on the size of your canvas, but probably around 30, maybe even 40%. So you basically want to make sure that it is feathered until probably the head or something like that. Then you can go in the adjustment panel, picking the first option, which is hue, saturation and brightness. And then if you play with the hue slider, you're going to be able to create this really nice gradient in the owl. So the bottom part is going to be a slightly different color than the top, which is just really interesting, I think. It just, it just makes it more fun. <laughs> So you can also use the selection tool, but this time drawing a totally random scribble for your selection. Still, don't forget to feather it though, otherwise it's going to look crazy, but this time it's probably going to be a bit less, so maybe 20%. And going back to hue, saturation, and brightness, you can play with any of the sliders, just a tiny, tiny bit this time, and this is going to help you add some randomness in your color. So color variation within the shape that is not necessarily a gradient. So if you're working with the free brushes, you could repeat the step three, five, four times even to create a lot of texture and color variation within your piece to make it look a little bit more like watercolor. I'm also going to do it on the eye layer, so in my case, the, the yellow part of the eye, and I'm going to select the top part of the eyes. And once more, we're going to feather the selection probably around maybe, I don't know, 30% this time because the eyes are you know fairly small. 
Going back to the hue saturation brightness tool, I want the top of my eyes to be a bit more orange. That is too pink. But yeah, you can really experiment with this tool to add just a bit more interest in your piece with color variation. That is going to one, make it look more fun, but also making it look a bit more like watercolor, especially if you're using free brushes. And we're also going to add some sort of a pattern on the belly and on the wings to make them look more interesting. So just create a new layer above the cream or I guess the belly layer. Rename this one to patterns. And here for now, we're going to leave the opacity at 100%, but we can always change it later. And we're going to stick with white. For your brush, you're going to go either in the brushing panel, picking the medium brush and lowering the opacity again. You can experiment, but around 40% would be my guess. Or if you have the watercolor brushes, you're going to pick the basic watercolor. And here there are a few things you can do. I personally like to add some little dots on the wings with varying size, just to make the wings a bit more interesting again, focusing them mostly on the top, kind of what would be the shoulder, I guess. You can also add some of those dots on the head, maybe the cheeks. You can really have fun here. You might also want to add some, I guess, sun rays so pretending the eyes are the sun and then drawing a bunch of rays around them it's really really hard to see it's just this subtle little detail that made the face look so much more interesting and just the illustration feel more professional than if it was just you know fully flat colors everywhere You can also add some dots on the belly, and for that I'm going to use the same color I used for the branch just to kind of make it a bit more coherent because right now we have the branch that is one color and the owl that is a different kind of color palette. So just including those together, merging them together is going to make the piece feel just more interesting overall as a whole. And same thing here, just drawing little dots or ovals, I guess, on the belly, maybe in groups of one, two, three, as opposed to just making them, you know, super homogenous everywhere. And yeah, super simple, but you can see already the owl is just so much more interesting than when it had just a fully cream, boring belly. <laughs> And the last thing you might want to do here is to slightly adjust the shape of your owl. So if there's anything that is not exactly how you want it to be, all you have to do is collapse the owl group so it's just easy to see in the layers. And then in the adjustment panel at the bottom, picking the liquify tool. Setting this tool to push, if you go ahead, you're going to see that if you use your pencil on the screen, it's just going to move the colors around. Now that was way too intense, but if you decrease the size of your brush, you can just go and very gently move stuff on your owl to make the shape a little bit more how you want it to be. Just be careful though here, you don't want to stretch things out too much, otherwise you're going to start stretching the pixels themselves and you're going to see loss of quality. So just be mindful with that, but otherwise you can, you know, tweak the shape a little bit. And if you enjoyed this video and want to learn how to paint more cute animals, I highly recommend you check out this playlist in which I'm going to teach you exactly that. But before we leave, make sure to give this video a like and subscribe to the channel so you don't miss any of the weekly videos I post every Tuesday and Saturday. Then click on the link right here and I'll meet you there.